Hey guys, Shane Storms with DroidMotorX.com. Today I finally have my full review of Cyanogen Mod 10 on the Galaxy S4. And I have to say, first off, that I have been nothing but impressed with uh, stock Android 4.2.2 on the Galaxy S4. Most of you guys have been telling me, and I have noticed as well, that even with a 1.9 GHz quad-core processor, that TouchWiz is still pretty laggy on the Galaxy S4. Now, when I say pretty laggy, it's not very, very noticeable, but you do get those minor glitches. And the reason why is because TouchWiz is just packed full of bloat. And so the very first benefit of running a ROM like CyanogenMod 10 is you just get rid of all that bloat. So you don't have all of the extra junk that's taking up space that is bogging down your device and making it run slower. So I basically noticed zero lag on Cyanogen My 10. So one of the first benefits is that you do get a little bit more storage space. While it's not an incredible amount, it is uh, better than what you had with TouchWiz. So we'll go into our storage and you're getting about two extra gigabytes. So I went from about seven, uh, six and a half gigabytes of total space to now about 9.72. So I have available 3.82. Now this is a 16 gigabyte model phone which is all that we can get on Verizon for the time being of course it does have that extendable uh, SD card slot so that you can add more memory to it but just that extra amount of memory that you get with a ROM like signage of my 10 is a plus and we'll go ahead and head into settings and see what we're working with go to about phone working with Android 4.2.2 Cyanogenmaya 10.1, the latest nightly is 609. And there is our Cyanogenmaya 10. So the main thing about running Signage of My 10 is that you're getting the stock vanilla Android experience. This is the way that Google meant for their phone operating system to exist. And that's the main benefit of running Signage of My 10 on a device like the Galaxy S4. Now there are many of you that will never run an AOSP ROM on the Galaxy S4 because you've become accustomed to all the TouchWiz functionality. But I found that in the S4 there are a lot of gimmicks. Now, I will say that I did use multi-window uh, because I became really familiar with that on my Note 2. So I, I did use the multi-window, and on the Note 2, I also used the one-handed keyboard. But with a 5-inch screen, there's really no longer a need for the one-handed functionality that you get with a Note 2, uh, which is not even present in the Galaxy S4. So the only real feature that I found myself using in touch with was the multi-window, which you will lose. Then I was also using the uh, TouchWiz Notes application, uh, but I don't have that anymore now that I'm running Signage of Mod 10. What you do get with Signage of Mod 10 is you get the Apollo Music application, you also get your file manager, and you get you get Torch, and all of the 4.2 Google applications. So another great thing about running a ROM like Signage of Mod 10 is that Wi-Fi tethering works out of the box. Go ahead and turn on our portable hotspot and it works without the need of provisioning at least on the Verizon model. That's what I have found. So another thing that you get with Signage of My 10 obviously is you're going to get some CM10 wallpapers and a Signage of My 10 boot animation. If you're into customization those are awesome things and then you do get another set of customization options in your settings. Before we run through the interface customization options in Signage of My 10, I did want to give a big shout out to Invisiblech. He's the guy that's maintaining Signage of My 10 on the Galaxy S4. He's been doing an awesome job. He's been getting nightlies out on a regular basis. So big shout outs to him, props to him for getting Signage of My 10 booting on the Verizon Galaxy S4. So that being said, we'll go ahead and jump into our customization options. You have your launcher options. This is Trebuchet launcher and it does include some really nice features. If you go into home screen you can change your grid size to allow for more applications on the home screen so you can have more rows, more columns. You can change the number of home screens and choose a default screen. You can choose to enable or disable the persistent search bar. And then my favorite is the transition effect. Of course I like the cube out. And uh, you see there are several other options here. There are some drawer options. If we go into the lock screen settings, you have screen security settings. 
You can turn on the battery status on your lock screen. You have some clock widget settings. I like to go in here and uncheck metric because we live in the United States and we don't use the metric system. Uh, so it should show up in Fahrenheit once you uncheck that. And then you can change your slider shortcuts. Just drag and drop to any shortcut and then you can change it from here. Go to applications, choose whatever application you like. We'll go with XDA mm -hmm. and you'll save that if you turn it off. And on, you can now drag up to XDA. We'll jump back into settings. Go into themes. One great thing about Signage Mod 10 is you can flash any Signage Mod 10 or AOKP style theme from the Google Play Store, and there are literally thousands of themes that you can choose from. So you can easily change the look and feel of your device. I'll go ahead and apply one just so you guys can see how quickly it works. And it'll give us this error, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to work. It has to do with the screen sizes and their differences. But as you can see, it still applied the theme anyhow. If we go back in there, we can change it back to the stock theme pretty quickly. Okay, and then there are some system settings. So we go into system, we have our status bar settings. We can choose to remove the clock or show the clock. There's AM, PM style, battery status style, and there's plenty to choose from here. And you can see all of your changes will occur on the fly. Signal status style and brightness control. If you don't have automatic brightness enabled, you can actually slide uh, your slider back and forth to change the brightness, which is a really nice feature. Show notification count allows you to see how many notifications you have. Uh, if I have an email notification, I can see that I have uh, four or five emails there. You have your quick settings panel. I have it to pull down on the left, but you can change that to the right or you can turn it off altogether. If you turn it off, it requires two fingers to pull it down. You choose to auto close panel. You can change your tiles and you can also change their layout. You can add and remove tiles. You can add power widgets to your notification drawer. Of course, we do have our quick settings. So there's really no need in my mind for power widgets, but some people prefer power widgets over quick settings. If that's you, there are options for power widgets. Expanded desktop with the Galaxy S4, uh, we do not have the Pi Control, or at least I can't get it to work at all. Um, with other versions of CyanogenMod 10, and this may come later on whenever we get to the uh, stable builds, but for now we're at nightly builds and we do not have any Pi functionality, and the only reason that I can think of is because we have our hardware buttons. Um, I know with the Note 2, I never could get Pi controls to work on the Note 2 and it was because of the hardware buttons. If you had software buttons then we can have Pi control but you still have the extended, the expanded desktop. If you press and hold that you see it's there. You can enable it or disable it. Even if you enable it you see you're not going to have any Pi controls. So really for our device that doesn't matter. You have your power menu, which is if you press and hold the power button. Clock widget, you can change that. And like I said, make sure that you uncheck metric if you're in the United States. And then you have some notification light settings. You can change the notification lights color for different applications. You can add an application. We'll go with Gmail. And I'll make that application red to match the... I'll make the notification light red to match the application itself. You can do the same for Twitter or YouTube or Facebook. And you guys get the picture with that. And then you have some hardware key settings. If you enable custom actions, you can change the menu button, the home button, and the back button. 
And that's about all for CyanogenMod10. We do have some performance settings here. Uh, there is no overclocking with this ROM. It doesn't come with a custom kernel. Um, it just comes with the stock kernel, so you're not going to be able to change any of the processor settings. There are some governors, but there's not going to be any overclocking at all. Of course, you get underclock to save on battery. And for now, on the Verizon Galaxy S4, we do not have an unlocked bootloader. We only have Loki, so I would not suggest that you try flashing any kernels. Uh, any kernel that would be available right now would be more for like a developer edition. I would not suggest flashing any custom kernels on this device until we have an unlocked bootloader. Okay guys, that about wraps it up for Signage Mod 10 on the Galaxy S4. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more coverage on the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, and all types of other phones that I cover. You can find more of me at DroidModRx.com where I'll have the latest in Android and tech news. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at DroidModRx. Once again, thanks for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.